In today's video, I have five social distancing games that you can play with your kids, your families, your students. They are great for indoors as well as outdoor options. And if you end up loving this video, I would love for you to give it a big thumbs up, like, and consider subscribing to my channel. If we are meeting for the first time, hi, my name is Sean, welcome. On this channel, I'm bringing back family fun one game at a time. All right, the first game is called The Alphabet Game. Before you play this game, grab some sheets of paper and write a word, one word per sheet of paper. You're going to need one sheet of paper for however many players you have, and you'll need to vary that first letter of the word. So don't have them all begin with the letter A. <laughs> vary your words. They can be random words or they can relate to your particular setting. When it's time to play the game, give everybody their sheet of paper with their word on it and ask everybody to arrange themselves in alphabetical order. Now, if you have younger kids, you could just have one letter of the alphabet per piece of paper. If you have adults, you could have the word be harder, by asking people to arrange themselves in order, alphabetic order according to the third letter in the word. The next socially distanced game idea I have for you is called kickball musical chairs. For this game, of course, you are going to need a kickball, some sort of a ball. It could even be a balloon and you'll need a chair for all your players. Space out the chairs. You can space them out three feet, six feet apart. However, everybody feels safe being spaced out in a circle. Give the ball to one player and press start on your music playing device. Now the real kicker here is they can only pass the ball with their feet. The ball can only go in one direction, so they'll be passing the ball either to the right or to their left for the entire game, and they must pass it in order from one person to the next person to the next person. And then when the music stops, whoever is left with the ball, they are eliminated from the game from the game. Now we typically play if the ball is coming your direction. So if somebody has already kicked or passed the ball and it's coming towards you, then that means you are also eliminated. And you play the game until only one player remains. That person is the winner. This next game is a magazine scavenger hunt, but really you could use a catalog, I, we don't really have magazines in our house. You could use a catalog or you could use a newspaper. But what you want is you want to have all the same magazine. So all your players need to have the same magazine. So this might be easier with a magazine or a newspaper rather than this catalog that I'm using to demonstrate today. And ahead of playing, you're going to create a list of 20 to 25 clues or things to find within the magazine. For example, you could ask someone to find a purple shirt. So there's a purple shirt right here. The first to, to find the purple shirt wins a point and the most points win. So you'll, you'll call out those prompts or objects or things you found. It could be like the title, a headline from the newspaper. It could be a certain picture. The next game is called Rainbow Relay. For this game, you're gonna need sheets of paper and crayons. My son and I played this game a couple of years back and had a lot of fun. We taped the paper up on a window. The object of this game is to have players build a rainbow the fastest. And whoever accomplishes this task first wins the game. But remember, you can only carry one crayon at a time. You can't carry all the crayons with you and just stand there and draw the rainbow. You have to take one at a time in this relay race. If you are loving this video, please consider giving it a big thumbs up and clicking that subscribe button. And if you want to go a step further and be a part of my yellow heart squad, then turn on all notifications. And I know that you are a loyal subscriber. All right. Game number five. Game number five is called What's That Smell? And it is inspired by a viewer of mine. Thank you, Augustus, for giving me this game idea. To play this game, you'll need about 10 to 15 smells <laughs> in jars. You can put cinnamon, you can put candle smell scents, you can put baby food scents in the jars, you could put essential oils. Just make sure that all of your players have all of the scents. You can play this indoors or outdoors, but every player will need their own table. And you can also play this with everybody, or you could set this up as just a few players and have an audience 
of the other players watching the game being played. Label all of your jars with numbers and create yourself a master list that has the name of the smell and the number beside it so that you have a master list of what everybody is smelling. How you play this game is players will be blindfolded. They will smell what is in the jar and then write down their answer on a sheet of paper. Or if they're playing in front of an audience, then you will need to have them write on a sheet of paper and then hold up their sheet of paper so that everybody can see what they guess. The player who guesses the most smells correctly wins the game. Make sure you have a variety of good smelling things and nasty smelling things to make this game more fun and have more laughter. Thanks so much for joining in today's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.